Welcome everybody back again to Baruch HaHavit Yisrael Kodal and to Diego. Very happy to have everyone and listening and uh, to be learning. We're on the second to last parak. Um, as always, I would like to refer to my for Yitzhak ben Ella and um, for Shalimah, my grandfather, and Abi Hulida uh, Levi, and Lila Nishmas, my, my great grandfather, um, David Gitzhak um, Levi. So we're, we're getting very close to the end. And we have uh, Perich Ches, the eighth Perich, and the first Mishnah. So we're going to be speaking um, the next couple of Mishnahs about uh, Beis Hillel, Beis Shammai, and different, different opinions between these two rabbis about what they said uh, concerning, uh, concerning mealtime, concerning uh, Suda. Il Dvarim Shabin Beis Shammai, Beis Hillel, Beis Suda. So these are the things, and and um, it just says that it, 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 this il devarim shabain. It's kind of just stating what's going to be said for the next couple of mishnayos. Um, it's not just for you know this mishnah. So it says these are the things between Beis Shama and Beis Hillel that they disagree with concerning a suda, concerning a meal. So we know that uh, nowadays, you know, everybody goes to a meal. They have people. Who, um, you know, everybody knows the order. You say Kiddush, you stand up, one, you know, at night, uh, then you wash your hands. But actually, well, I believe there's actually some some um, Jews, some certain sects of Judaism that actually wash their hands first and then say Kiddush. But and we see over here from this machlokas where it's from, from this disagreement. Oh, sorry, this is that's the next mission. Sorry, first. First, Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel disagree on what exactly is the order of the brachas. We spoke different um, different times about the orders of Shema uh, and you know what order they should go in. Now we're speaking about the order when you have uh, a glass and you have a cup of uh, Kiddush and you're ready to say Kiddush. Uh, do you say Allah Gafin first? Do you say the bracha on the grape juice or on the day? Or this also goes on into Yantif. Do you say the bracha on Yantif first or the wine? So according to Beishami, Varichai Al Hayova Achach Mavarach Al Hayayim. So according to Beishami, which we don't hold like this in this case, he says that you would actually say Mikadesh Hashabbos. You would say Mikadesh um, Shabbos, or you would say Mikadesh Yisrov Hazmanim, which is during Yom Tov. So, um, so he says that you're going, you're going to say that first, and then you're going to say it on grape juice. Beis Hillel says the opposite. He says that you say the bracha on the day, and then you say the bracha on the day. the opposite. He says that you say the bracha on the wine because the wine is, um, you know, because the wine, the wine. He says the wine should come first. Um, so uh, and then you say the bracha on the day, uh, either for Shabbos, Mekadesh Shabbos, or Mekadesh Shavuot Hazmanim. That's the first Mishnah. Uh, that we're dealing with, and we're going to be dealing next uh, with the next couple of Mishnahs about Beis uh, Shammai and Beis Hillel. So that one was very simple, just about order. Now we're going to be speaking about something that's a very, very big topic, but we're not going to get uh, all into it, but a little bit of a background is is Tumma. We're going to speak about Tumma and the precaution that Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai, they argued and they took these precautions to make sure that your hands don't become tame when you're eating a meal or when certain things happen during the meal where your hands can become tame by accident. Um, and just a little background of tama is that if you, there's a, an avatama, it's the, the father of the whatever, however you want to describe it, that it's the highest level and that can, and tama can, can um, you know, be tra- transmitted to other things but if it's the highest level, it can it can trans- transmit to the most things, people, utensils, food, drink. Um, but if it's lower, once it gets to that uh, rishon and it gets to this, you know, it goes from avatoma, uh, you know, the father into a rishon, and the rishon has less that it can transmit to. Once it comes to sheni, uh, the second level, then you know it's kind of it's like a it's like a chart. You know, the top makes a lot of things toma. Uh, toma is impure. I mean, if I know, you know, so. And the second one makes less uh, and then less. So um, we have there's, we have concerns during the meals uh, that we're going to be eating that certain things can happen that they're going to make our hands tama. They're going to make the utensil tama. And an example is the second the second mishnah in this uh, in parik ches the eighth parik. 
So he says that first, when you say Kiddush on, um, when you want to say Kiddush on wine uh, or grape juice, whatever you're saying it on, you wash your hands first and then you pour and make the Kiddush. Uh, so uh, this, has, again, the reason I brought up the Tumla is because this has a lot to do with a tumma of liquid. Liquid has a different a different type of tumma as well. Is that is that the liquid itself can actually uh, transfer and make something else a risha. It's actually a little bit higher. The, that when it comes to liquid tumma, it can make other things uh, a higher, like a, I guess the same amount of level. But usually, when you have something that's a risha, it turns it into a shani. But here, uh, when it comes to liquid, it's it stay it keeps that status and it can make things a uh, higher status. You know, turn something that's shani into a risha because it has um it, it's more it's more of a, the uh, it comes from the rabbis it's not it's not a uh it's not a, dec- a decree from the torah but basically but without getting too much into it because tum is a very big topic um this this machlokas that they're having beisham and beishilo whether you sit whether you wash your hands before kiddush or and then say kiddush or you say kiddush and wash your hands obviously we know that that we hold many many of us hold that you you uh, say Kiddush and then wash your hands. But there are some Jews that actually do hold of washing your hands and then saying Kiddush and then saying the, the Hamotzi. But we see here that Beishamai says that you don't that that you don't wash your hands. You don't say Kiddush first. Rather, you you say, you wash your hands and then you say Kiddush because he's concerned about the cup becoming t- of the cup itself becoming tuma. Because if you have some of the water and your hands were by accident tuma, and your hands were by accident tuma. Uh, you can make the cup in turn you can make that impure and then and then the inside can get impure and then your hands are impure and then everything you're eating is impure so Beis Hillel is not concerned with it is as much he's not con- basically Beishami is concerned that when you're pouring the the drink some of it's going to splash out and get onto the outside of the cup and that, then you're going to have a case where you're gonna your your uh, the water is gonna be become tumma because it's gonna splash out onto the you know, the wine is gonna splash out onto the cup or something in the in that wine. But here Beis Hill is not concerned about that, and he says that you're gonna be saying you're gonna be doing it the way that we know it is that you say uh, the kiddush and then you wash your hands. That's what Beis Hill goes, and that's what we hold with uh, most of us practically. But some do. I don't believe, I, I don't call me, but I believe it might be the Yeki, the Yekis Jews who do uh, hold of this, where they, I, mean, I met some, you know, Jews from uh, from Sweden and there are different places where they um, they washed their hands first, actually, and I was very surprised to see it. I don't know if it's based on the, this idea of Beishamai. There might be a different point that they're doing it for, but it, it, it makes sense that they would be going according to the Beishamai, where you actually wash your hands first, then say Kedesh, then say Hamotzi. So now we're on Gimel, and we're going to be speaking about another Machlokas, according to Beishamah and Beishilo, and this one also has to do with Tumah. Beishamah says, so there used to be back then that, you know, nowadays, Baruch Hashem, we have a lot of napkins, and, you know, people are just throwing, you know, people use one corner of the napkin and throw out the rest when, you know, it's pretty good. So back then, they didn't have that luxury, so they're using the same uh, napkin the whole time, the same towel or whatever, the whole time, and they wipe, they wipe, they wipe their hands with uh, the the napkin, uh, with the towel that they're going to be using out through the meal, and it's still a little bit damp. So Beishamai says that you put it on the table afterwards. You put, you take your 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 uh, your napkin, your towel that you're using. You uh, you wipe you wipe your hands off and then you put it on the table. Um, Beis Hillel says no. You put it on your on the cushion seat that's that you're sitting on. Uh, you don't put it on the table. It has to do again with this idea of tuma being transmitted from the water that's in the towel onto the onto the table. Whether the table might be uh, tuma or the, the it hasn't dried yet and you're going to be making the table tuma. Um, but if you put and Beis Hillel says that that you should be putting it on your on your um, on the side of your on your cushion like your you know your you know, over here um, because you know maybe it could be tumma the table 
So it has to do again with the tumma and the moisture within the towel. Um, and for the, the final one we're gonna do today, another uh, base shamay base hillel, and this also has could do. Oh, this this is um, a little bit different. This is not tumma. This has to do with something called. Um, it's uh, it's when you when you waste food in um, you know you can in, in Judaism you're not it's actually forbidden to 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 take something that's perfectly fine uh, and you could still ed still edible and to just you know pour water or make it inedible it's it's a waste of food so here um, we have machlokes uh, between beishamis hello as it was supposed to do beishamis ermin chabdin as I advise the agrakach nightlin yadam so beishamis says. When we finish with our meal and we're done eating, we sweep up the food, and then we wash our hands so that no, so that none of the food that was on the floor, that if it was bigger than it could, so I said before that if you're wasting uh, food by spilling water on it, now it's inedible, um, it's a, it's a forbidden. You're not allowed to do that. But that's only a certain amount. That's a kazayas, you know, a bigger piece. So if it's a smaller piece, then it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to be um, something that uh, that that's going to be considered forbidden. So he said, but but so according to Beisham, it's just so that you don't get into this problem where you wash your hands and then by accident you spilled on the crumbs that were on the floor that were big that were big enough that you know this bigger, you know bigger to still be eaten. Um, you you would have you would have a problem. So therefore he says that rather sweep up the floor first so there's no food on the floor and then wash your hands for the bechaz Muslim before you before you bench or whatever. Or you just want to make your, your hands clean. So Beishilo says the complete opposite. We wash our hands and then you sweep up after. Because he's not worried that there's going to be such big pieces. Because it's, it seems to him that, you know, if there's such a big piece on the floor that's still edible, somebody might pick it up. You know, somebody's still going to pick it up and it won't be an issue uh, that there's going to be a problem washing your hands and somebody's going to spill on the food and make it inedible. So these are the, this is Beisham and Beisilo, and there's the rest of this, um, uh, a lot, there's a lot more Beisham and Beisilo that we're going to get comfortable with and learning the differences between them. And, oh, I mean, these, these, these two are some of the, you know, biggest names in uh, disagreeing. But it's also noted, it's also should be noted that um, disagreeing in, in, the, in the Torah, you know, people think that, you know, people disagree all the time. It's all rabbis do, just disagree. But... There's really a fine line between them, and it's really not so. It's not so much of an argument as much of a, as, as as much as people think. It's usually less complex than it actually is. It's actually more understandable as to why each one holds a different way. Um, okay, so thank everybody for listening and join us at Torah.org. Make sure to spread the, the word, and thank everybody for listening. We're very happy to be uh, here.